Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. It's really good that you came to do this. You know what we're doing, don't you? These are all um, typed up questions that have come in over the internet from uh, people who like Pink Floyd. And we're going to look at them and then respond to them. Mm -hmm. So just relax. All right, try and be natural. Try not to Go drum ahead. on the table too much. That's natural. Should we just start? Yeah. Well, would you like to go first? How often did the songwriting process start with jam sessions of the two of you on drum and bass? Always. That was always the starting point, as I recall. Don't you think? Uh, it's not quite how I remember it, but that's just fine by me. Hank Hoopert, Jacksonville, the United States. Any interesting stories about the animals' recording sessions or tour? Didn't we do some fireworks that came down? We did. We, we, well, we made... Um, uh, we had mortars and they were in packs of nine and they were like Chinese fireworks and they would fire something that looked like a firework about a thousand feet into the air but when it went boof it opened out into about four or five foot long tissue paper thing parachute in the shape of a sheet with lead bits in its feet and they would and they would drift down over the crowd it was one of the most remarkable pieces of um, rock theatre that I've ever seen. And I've been desperate to do it again ever since. And now you can't. Health and safety. You can't fire anything over the crowd. Was that the first giant pig? We had a giant pig. We used to fill it with propane and set fire to it, I remember. <laughs> yes. As a climax. Mm -hmm. Was it that tour that we had the uh, inflatable pyramid? No. It was the tour, though, where I spat at that bloke in Montreal, which, which oh, was yes. the start of the war. Mm -hmm. I think it was a mate of yours, scrambling up the front, <laughs> trying to get one of your drumsticks, as I recall. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, you fought him off well done. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Right, this is from Jonah Nink in St. Charles, Illinois, in the United States. Nick Roger, you're probably sick of Pink Floyd-related questions by now. So here's something completely different. Who would win in a fight? Roger riding a dolphin or Nick in a bear costume? Joan, what can we say? What do you think? Well, I think the answer is it depends very much upon whether it was a water fight or a, a land. Yeah. Landborne, because well, riding a dolphin would have a hell of an advantage if we were at sea. And a bear costume would frankly be a problem. On the other hand, on dry land, the bear costume, I think, would, um, I think I could do well. It would be less of an encumbrance than some dolphin between your legs yeah. going, <coughs> like they do when you get them on dry land. Now they go, dee, 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 don't they? I don't know. There's a note on the back from Jonas' therapist saying, could he come back to the hospital? <laughs> My turn. Your turn. What did you think of the film, by the way? Which one? <laughs> Cedric from Costa Rica wants to know what was the inspiration for Comfortably Numb. Wow. Well, uh, we're making The Wall uh, album in conversation, I think, with Bob Esrin. We all figured out that we needed a song that had the doctor in it because we decided that the poor bastard who's the central character had gone a bit doolally and needed drugs and um, so we needed a doctor to prescribe the drugs so I was sent off to a little room so the inspiration really is the narrative What was Nick's reaction when you presented the concept of the war? Mick Webster, Sheffield, Great Britain. What was your reaction? I thought it was rather good. I thought it held a lot of promise. Uh, and it was a, the first uh, version of it was uh, pretty rough and ready, as far as I remember. Beautifully said. That's not what David said. Well, right. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Simon, 
Paul Stevens from Holden in the USA. Nick only sings on a few Pink Floyd songs, Scream Thy Last Scream, Corporal Clay, One of These Days. How come he didn't perform vocals more often? Well, I was held back. Nurse, guitar. <laughs> We're going to put this one to the test now. Why wouldn't they let you sing? I don't know. Jealousy, possibly. <laughs> but uh, given that there were some perfectly good singers in the band, I was perfectly happy uh, not to even tackle the whole business of uh, multitasking and trying to sing and play the drums at the same time. One of these days. Well, actually, it wasn't that at all, was it? It was, one of these days, I'm going to catch you with the little pieces. Slowed down. I know it was. Yeah, yeah I know. You, you, you well, that's there. interesting, whoever yeah. asked that. Next. Oh, it's a long one. Oh, and that's to Mr. Waters, but I'll read it to you. And that's from Glenn Smith in St. Louis, Missouri. To Mr. Waters, what do you look for when you're trying to find the perfect group of children's chorus for the song Another Brick in the Wall? And for Mr. Mason, how do you compose the drum beats and rhythms for Pink Floyd albums? And which album was your personal favorite to work on? How I'm going to be able to concentrate on answering that question while well, knowing that I'm going that to you can tell us how you write the drum parts. <laughs> But I will try. What we do is we have a rider that goes out to uh, the promoter and it says, bosh off into town and find a bunch of kids, not from some posh school, who might appreciate the opportunity to come and work with us for an afternoon. The process is wonderful because they're new every day and they come up on the stage and I always work with them with Kip Lennon and uh, John Joyce, two of the BVs and I routine them and work with them for about half an hour and then they go away and they come back at about 10 past 8 for the beginning of Brick 2 and then it was fabulous. Do you want to say anything about the original version of Nick Griffiths finding the... Yes I do. We were in LA finishing the record off. We had the multi-track of Brick 2 and uh, we sent it back to England. And it said, Dear Nick, find some local kids and record them on this. And it was only a minute long, the whole thing. And he did, absolutely on his own, with no help from any, any of us. And we stuck it on and looped it through the multi-track, put all the faders up, pressed play, and went, Wow. Suddenly realising that it was a proper record because the, the kids in London had, well, sounded fantastic. Then we had to make it a bit longer so it could be a single, which is why there's a guitar solo on the end. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Well done. OK, next. You for me? You. This is from Dylan Stower in Riverside, in the United States. Do you guys ever miss touring the world together? Also, how does it feel knowing that you have made music that changed the world and people's lives, such as mine? Well, obviously not mine. I mean, his, if you see what I mean. Because, uh, anyway, I'm only 19 and Pink Floyd has made me the person I am today. Also, how's someone stealing women's underwear? Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you for everything, Roger and Nick. Dylan. OK, let's start at the beginning. Do we miss touring the world together? Yes, a bit. You've been touring the world on your own, and it's been a lonely trip. Um, if you're not going to take this seriously, I'm not going to read the questions. I am okay. taking it seriously, okay. and I think you're doing a magnificent job answering it on yeah. your own. Well, you don't well, need me. As usual, carry this. I'll come in when it starts talking about politics. Okay, you deal with the <laughs> all that stuff about changing lives. Bloody hell. Uh, no, it's all about women's underwear. <laughs> no, it's the bit about... Um, Hard old lane. Had a strange hobby. Let's not, let's not make fun of Dylan. It's, very, it's fantastic that we have fans, fans, people who like the music and have, who are 19 years old. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, it's very cool. Do you know what? That means he was born in 1996, which was only oh, last nice. week, <laughs> yeah, sort absolutely. of. Absolutely. Long after I'd retired. <laughs> yes. Shall we move on?
Well, unless you've got any more to say about how you feel about changing people's lives. You know, if one can have any positive, just to be serious for a second, any positive effect on anything, anywhere, and anybody's life, that is a really, really good thing. Next. Mr. Waters, what do you miss the most from Nick? And Mr. Mason, what do you miss the most from Roger? That's from Luca in Croatia. Mm. Sense of humour. Next. <laughs> Are there any songs that you wrote that you loved at first, but as time went on you thought to yourselves, what was I even thinking? That's from Brent Bollmeyer in Marissa in the USA. I probably, I can't, think of, I can't think of one now, but obviously when I was young and miserable and angry and dumb, and I was all those things, as you recall, I'm sure. I'm sure I wrote a load of crap, um, but I think I'm, it's well hidden and buried. And so, no, I, I, I don't go back and go, what was I thinking? Because I wasn't thinking, really. Is there anything that you regret during your years in Pink Floyd? No. What's funny about that? <laughs> okay. I think... No, okay. No regrets at all? No. Yeah. Across the board, everything you did, <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, everything I did, yeah. No comment. When was your top level in making writing music and how is your music creativity today? Is it sinking at that age? Rainer Falkenberg from Germany. Just slowly drifting towards the peak of my powers. Joe Field, Great Britain, Oakhampton. What did Nick think when he saw the show? What show? You show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Loved it. Thought and the technology particularly was extraordinary from the old days. And I thought you'd stayed remarkably true to the original recorded music. I was surprised you hadn't sort of fiddled around with it too much. Thank you. Ah, Fabian. I knew we'd get to this. Fabian Izzy from uh, La France, from Marseille. Why is a Pink Floyd tour or record with the surviving... Mem oh, no, I've gone German. <laughs> Why is it so out of the question? What? A, is that a tour or a record with the surviving members? Just tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't understand because it's why so... you won't come and tour with us. <laughs> or why David won't either. Uh, I just think, I oh, know we're probably past that. What would be the point? Why would one do that? Oh, getting me out of the house might be good. <laughs> a good reason for doing it. Yeah, that. yeah, it might. What's your favourite song from the war? And why, why is it your favourite? And that's from John Buss in Sydney, Australia. Oh, I think comfortably now. All right. Because it's a cooperation, I think that's why I like it so much. I like it too. I think Vera. Hi, Roger and Nick. As a touring musician, I'm curious about the ways the four of you bonded in the most successful years of Pink Floyd, from around metal to the wallish. Did you guys bond mostly as friends or more over the music while writing and coming up with ideas as bandmates? We bonded uh, as students, would you say, but prior to the whole musical enterprise. As friends, Nick. Yes, as friends. Right. Yeah. You were a sort of student friend. I had to teach you about friendship, about sharing your toys with other boys. Sadly, a lesson <laughs> that you don't seem to have learned yourself that way. Yeah, anyway. No. <laughs> well, this is one for you. This doesn't apply to me. Well, it does in a way. No, it. No, it. Hang on a minute. Shall I read it? No. Oh, no, it, no, I'm just not, we trying to figure sort of it out. Whether it applies to both well, of those I, I'm going to hand it to you to read, but okay. I've got to say it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't apply to me. Okay. It, <laughs> it does apply to me. What do you think you would be doing if you weren't musicians? <laughs> it's from Vilma in Finland. Well, you're not a musician. You're a drummer. 
<laughs> Excuse me. What advice can you offer to a fledgling bassist and drummer on how to create a solid working arrangement? Why, I'll read that. Why don't you do this one? What? <laughs> Go on. What, what advice can, can you offer a fledgling bassist and drummer on how to create a solid working arrangement? Jose Ignacio Sosa Luna. In your careers as musicians, after Mr. Waters leaving Pink Floyd, what did you find was the most difficult obstacle you had to, have to, had to overcome? Well, it was like losing my right arm. Like that, it was. Worse. But we struggled on. Back in the 70s, how competitive were you towards other rock bands like Led Zeppelin or The Who? And did you know them personally? When you beat Pete Townsend a bit, I never knew anyone from Zeppelin. No. Did you? But we well, weren't we competitive, never... really, yeah. were we? People always built a bit of that into it, but with the business of sort of who was selling the most tickets. And it's not really a competitive sport, is it, being a band? Not when you're as bad as we were. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in trying to compete with people who could play, yeah. like the drums and guitars and things. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Are you still in close contact with David Gilmore? If so, do you consider yourselves to be his friends, enemies? Well, it's definitely not enemies, but I'm, I'm not in close contact with David. I very rarely speak to him or see him. Are you? I haven't seen him for a while, but we obviously saw quite a lot of each other last year, but not this year. And I certainly wouldn't describe myself as his enemy, but he would describe himself as my friend. I mean, he's somebody that I worked with a lot for many, many years, but I've rather lost, sort of lost apart. touch with. Yeah, drifted apart in an, in an amicable way. I've heard rumours that during the Dark Side tours, your faces were hidden so much that you could mingle with the crowd before the show and no one would even know it was you guys. Is there any truth in that? And are there any cool stories around that? When we lost the top of the pyramid at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, we, were... we did leap off the front of the stage and walk back to the hotel through the crowd we did. without anybody rec recognising yeah. you. You me. <laughs> Any of us. Any of us. So that's true. Yeah. What are you afraid of? What are you most afraid of? A lack of light. A lack of enlightenment. A lack of understanding. I'm a bit alarmed about death. Did you manage to tear down your personal walls? Some of them. You? Yeah, some of them. Not all. Yeah. Ah, this is a good finishing note. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Hans Killer? Hans Keller? Yeah. It's why, why so loud? Question from Thomas J. Lavery, Manchester, Great Britain. Why does it have to be so terribly loud? So this man obviously remembers Hans Keller as well. But why does it have to be so terribly loud? Because we like it loud. That's what Sid said, didn't he? Excellent question. Good way to finish, eh? Yeah. Shall we say good night, Gracie? Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie.